for anybody who has a background in the literature of Midrash and uh, uh, Talmud and Kabbalah, throughout the story there are clearly references which show us that, that the, the, the beautiful outer garb of the story is the tip of the iceberg of what's actually in there in terms of Kabbalistic wisdom. Because this story, which is a, a, a sort of counterpointed account of the lives of two childhood friends, one of whom was uh, very smart, uh, very with it, anxious to get out there and see the world and experience everything and try everything. And uh, uh, the other one is uh, called the simpleton, is not uh, a, a foolish individual, he's just very straight forward a b c d without fancy interpretations and always trying to get behind and wondering what lies here and what lies. he just goes ahead so the uh, the simpleton actually when he they have to leave school he becomes a shoemaker and uh, he buys his leather he buys his uh, his threads he's got his hammer and his nails and there he is uh, bang 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 and not very good at his job he comes up with a a shoe that is really th a three-cornered shoe but he says this is so beautiful because uh, i was able to do this god gave me this gift of this beautiful shoe and he's always happy with his simple achievements not so his worldly wise friend who can't stand this little shtetl where they live, who has to get up and go and go to travel to uh, Germany and to Italy and to Spain and to all the latest uh, hotspots, Thailand, India, wherever you want to go. And uh, he's never satisfied. Whatever he does, it's never enough. His mind is always criticizing what uh, he's accomplished so far. He has to go on until the point where he actually drives himself out of his mind by his own sophistication. Shortly after Rabbi Nachman had begun telling the first of the 13 longest stories, he gave a very lengthy, profound Torah discourse in the course of which he explains why he's telling stories. And he alludes there to our situation in the modern age where enormous numbers of our brothers and sisters have fallen away from all knowledge and connection with the Torah. And Rabbi Nachman, I think, was self-consciously opening up this new pathway of telling these wonderful and gripping stories in order to project to the souls of Israel our inner soul. This he explains in his teaching in Likutei Moran, his seminal work in the first part in Torah 60, where he discusses the subject of Sipurim Masiot, why the Sadiq tells these stories. And there he also lets us know that they're so carefully crafted that somebody who is not fit to receive from this will have the way closed off from him by the way the story has been told. So that if a person is really open to receiving the true message of the story, it will get to them. And if not, they'll just brush it off. And Rabbi Nachman compares the healing of the soul to the restoring light to a person that had lost their sight. And as they go through the healing process, you cannot simply open up the, all the windows and the doors and shine bright sunlight in their face. You have to let them very gradually accustom themselves to the light. And likewise, the vehicle of the story that Rabbi Nachman developed is a garb through which he sends his messages. And the story of the worldly son and the simple son is really the story of all of us and the story of the whole world. It's the story of humanity because all of us have these two elements in us. They are the Esau and the Jacob of the Bible in the heart and the soul of each one of us. The Esau, the sophisticated evil instinct as opposed to the straightforward simple one who follows the path of God, the path of the Torah, step by step. And the whole world now is struggling over this 
this, uh, these two pathways. And we're seeing actually the world that has become so very, very sophisticated falling deeper and deeper into the mud of Satan's bog that nobody can get out of to the point where the end of the story leads to nothing less than the righteous tzaddik who will come and save all us sophisticates who are drowning in the mud and the bog. And this very carefully crafted story depicts the character of the worldly son and the simple son in the most beautiful way. Some of the passages in this, this book really uh, uh, are, are supreme uh, literature, particularly the passage when the simple son is a, a simple shoemaker and uh, he has uh, nothing in the house except uh, bread, but he calls his wife each time for some soup now and she brings bread, for some meat now he, she brings bread, for the dessert she brings bread, and all the time he's ecstatically happy. Uh, they have only one garment between them. When he needs to go out to the synagogue, he calls his wife for his smart coat. She brings out the sheepskin. When he's got to go with the merchants in the market to sell his shoes, she brings him the sheepskin. Each time he's delighted, ecstatically happy with everything. We see Rabbi Nachman's uh, art of the storyteller, which uh, coming from this uh, this. Uh, profoundly wise Sadiq and Makubal, every word of these stories contains, contains gems and treasures. And of course the practical point of this particular story is through the medium of this myth rich, writ large of these two stereotypes, the worldly wise son and the simple son to open up for us who we really are, what we really are, through the guise of the characters in the story. Rabbi Nachman himself told us that there are many stories among the, uh, the nations of the world in different literatures and uh, some of them have a grain of truth in the story, but the stories of Rebbe Nachman are not just a casual literary uh, innovation. They are carefully crafted to convey the profoundest Kabbalistic wisdom within the garb of the story. You see, Rabbi Nachman understood something which was only spoken about by later psychologists, and that is the resistances which people have to receiving the light of spirituality. There are the internal resistances where a person does not want to hear the message, they fear perhaps it's going to involve too much change, uh, too much instability. Then there are all of the external obstacles. In our time, more than ever, people have all kinds of stereotypes about what is the Torah, what is it to be from, to be religious, what is, it, is, is it fanatical, is it extremist? And Rabbi Nachman knows that you cannot teach people about the essence of who they are and avoid arousing these inner and outer resistances unless you clothe it in the beautiful garb of the story. And the story gets around the resistances. It's enabled to get its message into our hearts and our souls without each time getting the same uh, blank uh, wall. So this is the way that Rabbi Nachman finds, uh, opens up a path for the Torah to enter into the neshama by expressing the truth of the neshama, the soul, within the garb of the story so perfectly crafted by the wise tzaddik who has all of the, 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 the knowledge and the skill and the ability with Lashon HaKodesh, with the holy tongue and the words of the Torah that he can clothe them in these garments. In the story of the worldly one and the simple son, we see something that historically uh, relates very much to the unfolding of the Jewish people over the last 250 years. It was in Rabbi Nachman's time, it had started somewhat before, there was what developed into the enormous assimilationist uh, movement in the Jewish people. The young people of the shtetls had their eyes on the universities of Germany, of Italy, on medicine, on law, on business career. The people of Eastern Europe had their eyes on uh, North America, the land of uh, where there's gold and uh, them their hills. And Rabbi Nachman 
was clearly in the story of the simple son and the uh, and the uh, the worldly wise son he was depicting the two pathways that were being presented to each and every Jewish person in his time and indeed in the generations thereafter and showing where is the path of sophistication and trying everything going to lead the path of uh, libertarianism and licentiousness and how we really need to be following the simple path of taking things step by step on Pshat level, on the level of, 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 of what the thing is saying in a straightforward way. And this indeed relates to one of Rabbi Nachman's most important themes in the closing years of his life when he was emphasizing the importance of pshitut, simplicity, simplicity and sincerity. The, 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 the word that has been translated into English as the simple son is the Hebrew word tam. And the Hebrew word tam means one who is without a blemish. He is just a pure, sincere person. And the two words, simplicity and the quality of being a tam, timimut, are used again and again by Rabbi Nachman, pshitut and timimut, going with the Torah in a simple way, trying to fulfill the straightforward meaning of the text without trying to force too many distortions on it and doing so with all your heart. You cannot be perfect, you cannot accomplish everything in a perfect way, but just go with sincerity. And the story of the worldly son and the, the, the simple son very much brings up the counterpoint between these two different tendencies within us and gives us the way forward through the very beautiful way that the simple sun is depicted. And indeed, I would say this goes to the very heart of Rabbi Nachman's Torah pathway, that people who have entered broken and torn up and out of uh, troubles and difficulties, they will understand that you go where you are, the, mo the, the, the point you are at now, and you just take the simple next step and go step by step in a simple way, you can come to undreamed of heights, levels of, of development, levels of accomplishment, of achievement that you would never have dreamed possible. And this is really what people would call the, the, uh, the long way that is really the short way as opposed to the sophisticated who's going to go to this Kabbalah center and to that uh, retreat and to this intensive seminar and on that uh, juice diet and uh, they never actually get to what is needed because they don't yet have the skill of simplicity and sincerity.